Thank you. How's everybody doing? Can you hear me? Perfect. All right. Well, thanks for listening. Uh, yeah, this is a repair and retrofit of an earthquake damaged middle school with FRCM. Just a very simple case study. I'm Alex Datto, Senior Composite Strengthening System Field Engineer for the Southwest for Simpson. And start in on the story. So this is a school up in Eagle River, Alaska. It was damaged in the 2018 Anchorage earthquake. Uh, and it was one of the ones that uh, displaced a lot of students. And they were running out of room for the students, uh, so they really wanted to look at retrofitting this structure. Um, the structural engineer of record on this project was Reed Middleton. GC Cornerstone FRCM installer was uh, Generation Plastering. Uh, and I'll go into the backstory a little bit here. Uh, but essentially, there's, there's 36,000 square feet of a ripped masonry uh, structure that needs to be reinforced. Uh, and repaired after the earthquake. Um, so if you're looking at the structure, um, I don't have a laser pointer, do you? Oh yeah, I do, cool. Um, right here, the main egress paths are hallways that go in kind of an X pattern. You have the multi-use room uh, and the uh, theater over here as well, and the gym. And on the outside of the building was about four inches of the ribbed veneer as well. So very, very heavy structure, did not perform very well. You got flexible wood diaphragms um, supporting all those walls in the earthquake action. Uh, and essentially everything shook, shook up pretty bad. The diaphragm uh, separated from the walls. Uh, but the big problem is we have wood frame shear walls around the exterior, and the interior walls are that ribbed masonry solid grouted. So very, very stiff interior walls, heavy interior walls, heavy exterior walls that are much more flexible. Uh, so Reed Middleton's first, first thing they did was uh, require the removal of all that uh, veneer, masonry veneer. That brought the building weight down enough to where the interior walls worked. They had to reinforce the existing wood walls, reinforce the diaphragm, uh, and those interior seam walls worked for strength, but didn't meet today's code requirements for uh, rebar spacing. Um, so they selected the FRCM system, uh, which the com main component, or there's two components to an FRCM system, which we'll go through in a second. Uh, so FRCM, if you're not aware, is a combination of a carbon fiber grid and it gets embedded in a cementitious matrix, which is just another nomenclature for fiber reinforced concrete. Uh, it's polypropylene fiber reinforced uh, 7,500 PSI mix. Uh, so they were using this system to approximate the tighter rebar spacing across the whole building uh, on those interior walls for the most part. Uh, and then when we got to the theater where we have very tall walls, they put it on both faces to reinforce for out of plane. A um, little bit more on FRCM. These are the benefits. It's going to be high tensile strength, uh, low weight, low impact, low architectural impact as well. It's a very thin system, about a half inch uh, for minimum installation thickness. It's going to conform easily to existing shapes. It goes on very quickly because it's a spray applied cement solution. Uh, and then it's going to be cost effective when it fits the project, which this is a perfect case study for this uh, system. Uh, we want a previously roughened surface working for ICRI CSP6. Um, so with that ribbed fluted masonry, which we'll see in a few slides here, you can see it's a very uh, effective solution uh, opposed to some of the other solutions we looked at. Uh, going a little bit more into benefits, uh, it's substrate compatible, so it's going to be um, porous, just like a masonry would be, so it'll breathe similar, naturally heat resistant, it's going to provide its own uh, kind of abrasive resistance and it's going to repair as you add strength, and that's really the main difference uh, or main important part of an FRCM system is that we can repair existing concrete and add strength as we do it. So just for those that are unfamiliar, we'll go through the installation. Uh, but you essentially need to clean up your substrate to where there's no more paint or bond breakers. Uh, then you get it to a saturated surface dry condition, wetting it down until it won't accept any more moisture, and then letting the surface dry back out. And you mix it and pump it through the uh, spray application. On this project, they use a shotcrete pump. Once it's sprayed on the wall, you do one layer, and then you layer in your carbon fiber grid, and then you spray another layer over the top, uh, and then you have to do a wet cure for about five to seven days uh, after finishing. And the last step on this project was actually applying FRP anchors around the outside for positive connection. So we'll look at that in more detail. but. On the left here is a photo of the fluted CMU right after the earthquake, and you can see it really started to get moving. We've got horizontal cracks as it uh, you know, flexed in and out during the earthquake action, and then there's temporary bracing coming in to support the wall. And for FRCM, it's very easy to prep. 
Um, all they had to do on this project was sandblast, get all the paint off the wall, and then you could actually apply that thin layer. So we're looking at about a half inch of CSSCM built up over the flutes. Flutes are about two inches deep. Um, other systems that were looked at for this project was uh, shotcrete and FRP. Shotcrete kind of impeded on these egress paths and then was going to require more diaphragm connections, more foundation work. So a little bit more expensive. And then FRP across that 36,000 square feet is about a million dollars cost difference over, over that area due to having to flatten it out in order to reinforce so In this case, the uh, FRCM system really shined. And again, that's due to the previously rough surface. As we get into the details, this is just an example of the main specification on plan. Uh, very simple. They put it in the spec section that said we're going to put FRCM with this grid type on all interior walls, and then when you got to the plan view, uh, they just showed which face of the wall they wanted on and the minimum length. And again, it's about a half inch application with a single layer of a bi-directional carbon grid, so we're adding tensile capacity in both directions, uh, as well as those polypropylene fibers kind of holding the whole system together for crack control. And then the last step, uh, Reed Milton did want positive connection to the actual structure, so we have FRP anchors kind of around the whole picture frame of every wall, and then where we had FRCM stacking between levels, uh, we ran FRCM anchors. So this is a typical detail for the typical wall on the project. Uh, and again, coupled with FRP anchors, we added tensile strength, about 10 kips per foot in each direction, and half inch thickness, one layer of grid, and then the anchoring requirements around the picture frame of the wall. And you can kind of see it in the elevation. Uh, this wall would have had a wall stacked, so there's an additional detail for the FRCM anchors. We'll look at it here. Uh, in this case, because it's a bi-directional grid, the anchors couldn't just be installed vertically to carry just the tension. Uh, so we did uh, it's alternating 45, 45 degree anchors to tie the whole system together uh, and give it that positive connection between floors. So again, diagonal prop placement of FRCM anchors, which is really just a bundled up version of the grid uh, with individual fibers so you can splay it out. And then those fibers get embedded inside wood blocking to hold them in a straight and neat orientation. As we go a little bit further, uh, the taller walls in the theater uh, actually did need out of plane strengthening. Uh, so in this case we had to put them on both sides and we switched to a heavy bidirectional carbon grid, so just a little bit more carbon. Uh, per inch, and that'll give you the strength that we're looking for. It's still a half inch to three quarter inch application, uh, but again, heavy bidirectional grid. And the existing wall had number fives at 32 inch vertical, and with the FRCM system, we could get up to about two kips per foot of out of plane resistance both directions. So here's the typical detail for the theater walls. Again, we still have the FRP anchors around the picture frame, give positive connection. Uh, and now we've actually reinforced the wall for flexural loads in both directions. Again, with the one layer of heavy bidirectional grid. And just a little bit more on the actual anchor, anchor installation. On this project, the FRCM system can finish out fairly smooth. It's, it's polypropylene fiber, so they did a sponge finish on it. Uh, and the school district actually wanted parents to be able to walk through the building and see a change, a structural change, something that's a little bit more visible. Um, so in addition to the anchors providing positive connection, these anchors were just installed as you see them and they painted right over them so you can actually walk through the building and uh, I guess have a little bit more peace of mind that something was done structurally other than just plastering over the existing cracks. Uh, this is just another shot of what they looked like when they got installed. Now we're going to look at quality assurance measures that were involved. Uh, so there's always going to be field testing with any of these systems that are surface applied, surface bonded. Uh, so with that, we have an adhesion test where we're actually verifying that the system's bonded to the substrate correctly. Then there's going to be a lab test. Uh, in this case, for the FRCM system, there's two lab tests. Uh, first one is a compressive mortar cube test, just the three brass cylinders filled up on site, cured on site, and then shipped into a lab for compressive testing. And then there's a tensile coupon test where you create a physical sample of the actual uh, CSSCM, the cementitious matrix, and the FR, FR uh, carbon fiber grid, let it cure on site, and then they ship that to a lab, cut it into tensile test testing coupons, and it'll verify the strength and the stiffness of the overall system. To give you an idea of what these look like, the field test at the top 
Usually a sacrificial patch of mortar is applied outside of the reinforcement area. If you core all the way into the substrate through that, it fix a test dog with some epoxy, pull it off to prove that you're getting the bond. And with this system on masonry, we're looking for failure within that existing masonry substrate. For the compression test, again, we're looking for 7,500 PSI at 27 days. Uh, and then the picture on the bottom right is an example of one of those witness panels getting cast on site. And now we're going to look at some quick videos of the actual installation. Uh, so a typical FRCM installation will have basically three simple steps. First one, spray the material. Second step is laying out the grid into the material. And the third one is spraying on uh, the last layer. So you do about a quarter inch to a half inch grid and then another quarter inch. On this project, the installers were pretty smart. Figured it's going to be hard to build up exactly a half inch past those flutes. So they did three passes, one to fill the flutes, one for the first build of the cement matrix, and then the final one to cover up the grid once it was laid out. So this is actually them putting in that first layer of grid. Oh good, the sound isn't there good, it's very loud. Um, so this is the band room, and right now, the guy with the spray gun is just going through, topping off all the uh, flutes, and then the guy with the screed is coming by and striking them out flush with the top, so they have a nice flat surface to start with. When we go to the next slide, they've already done the second pass, so they've built up a quarter inch past the flutes, and then they're going to lay out the actual grid. Um, and in this project, we had penetrations kind of built into the design, so it made it very easy for them to make field adjustments. You'll see as we pan down and start going back up, the gentleman in the orange is going to use his trowel to cut the grid around an existing light fixture, uh, and you can make that kind of adjustment as long as you build it into your design on a project like this. The next slide is pretty simple, but they're just topping off the actual grid. If I can get it to play. There we go. So the grid's been laid out. It's about a 77-inch wide grid. That wall's about 25 feet tall to give you an area, idea of the coverage rate. Uh, and this guy's just sprayed an additional quarter inch over the top to seal up the whole system. But we don't have cover requirements with carbon fiber grid. Um, so half inch is the actual thickness of the installation on this project. And they did this entire room about three hours. The photo on the right is what the system looked like right as it was finished spraying. They just hit it with the wet sponge, give it the smooth finish. And we're a little worried that our, you know, architecturally you're going to see the flutes broadcast through, but as it dries out, it starts to look like a, almost like a stucco or plaster finish, just a little bit heavier grit in the actual mix design. And Kids return to Grinning Middle School in about 2021. Uh, yeah, August 2021, and the ribbon cutting was in October. And school's been back in service for a few years now. But, um, with this system on previously rough and system, you can really cover a lot of ground and reinforce at the same time. And it's really, the mixed design itself is very helpful with the actual application. You can do about a two inch build on a vertical surface or overhead with it, and um, that's really due to the fibers and the quality of the concrete or the cementitious matrix. Um, last slide is just acknowledgments. The one I somehow dropped off of here is Reed Middleton, of course, the structural engineer of record. Uh, but then we have the Anchorage School District, MCG, Cornerstone, and Generation Plastering, our installer. Uh, and that's it for, for me today. If you have any questions, please let me know.